Morning guys, here we are at Six Forks Farm and exciting day for us today because, well, lots of reasons. We are catering today for the Cedar Creek Lake Gardening Club and they're coming here to the table for wood fire pizza. And we're real proud of our wood fire pizza because it's the best quality. We use the, the finest ingredients. We have a five cheese blend uh, that's special for pizzas. We also have a uh, house made sauce that we use from great tomatoes. And then our Italian sausage is like an imported Italian sausage from a company called Fontanini. And it's really uh, the best there is. So we're excited to be able to serve that for lunch today. But what makes it really exciting, because we really do that a lot, but we are we're doing a farm tour today for these ladies. We have 50 ladies coming today for lunch. And then after lunch, we're gonna do a farm tour. And we're gonna eat right here behind us here at Six Forks Farm, the table. We're gonna go and do a farm tour, which is really exciting because as the, the winter last year progressed into colder, we, we kind of downsized the farm just a little bit, which is relatively normal for, for people because you don't have vegetation for your animals to eat. You don't have you know things in the winter that you need. So a lot of people downsize. Toward the winter last year, we had problems with uh, chickens being picked off a few at a time overnight. Uh, we had our pigs that were processed uh, last year and, and put in the freezer. We're finishing up those now. And uh, so we got, oh, you're gonna see on the farm tour today, we've got baby chickens, you're gonna see those. Uh, so it's exciting to kind of get the farm back up and going again. We've got lots of green grass coming in. We're starting to rotate the cows and the sheep around. All of our ruminants eat just grass. And so we're gonna rotate those from pasture to pasture. And then we've got, uh, We've got pigs on order, so we're going to do pigs a little differently this year than what we've done in the past. So we have, we are going to rotate them around the forest area near the lake, but we're going to do a different breed of, of pigs. We're going to do the um, an Asaba and Duroc mix, which is uh, kind of a different pig. So the Asaba pig is, is a smaller in stature pig, shorter, closer to the ground, and but they're known for their excellent marbling and their and their fat texture and their meat which is really unique to them which is really what we're looking for um, in a pig and the reason that is is they're they're really great pigs they've adapted to their environment so they were dropped off like long time ago they were dropped off in Asaba Island and they used to be big in stature back then but then they're the way the the type of pig that they are they've adapted to their environment and that's kind of what they're known for so like they've adapted to the salt water in the ocean um, they've adapted to there wasn't a lot of vegetation for them to eat so they they became smaller in stature and then that became their new bloodline so uh, we're excited to be able to do those and more on those when we get them we'll show you guys videos of those but i'm um, excited for the farm tour today and excited for lunch and lots to see so uh, we're going to take you all along with us and hopefully it's fun for you all as well. Okay, so we're about an hour until guests arrive. I'm here with Jack. What's up? We're doing some, Jack's doing some maintenance here, weed eating the grass and stuff, getting ready for guests. But uh, we're going to go and check out, Lindsay's been working all morning moving the cows to uh, the driveway. So like one of the things we do is we rotate the cows and the sheep from pasture to pasture, side to side. And so they can eat the grass that's really high, kind of like this grass right here. And then it gives it time to rejuvenate and rest in between eating. So we rotate them from area to area. And you may have seen if you followed us last year, we did some of that. So right now, Lindsay worked this morning with the kids, kind of getting the barn ready and um, we're gonna show you, she moved the cows to the driveway because there's a whole bunch of grass there before we move them into um, what we used to call the bachelor pad, the small pasture area, okay? And, um, hey Ben. Hi, yeah, hurry and climb in because we're gonna go and see the cows real quick and then we gotta get back up and, and get ready. Sit down, sit back. What? 
Okay, so coming up this area, here I'll show you what they look like here. She's got them way down at the other end. And then she'll, piece by piece, move them down the driveway and then into this pasture here. So let me just show you. All right, so here we go. Eventually, later today, they're gonna go in this little two acre pasture here and eat all of that high grass. I know we see some weeds in there and some flowery stuff, which they won't mess with. The weeds, the sheep will eat, and you can already see some of that grass is starting to seed. It's starting to head, which is not good because it'll start to lose nutritional value from here. But at the same time, it still needs to be eaten. So we're a little behind. We've just gotten so busy. So then we'll get them right in here and then eventually down there in the back to eat all of that grass down by the lake. But here they are, here in the driveway. You can kind of see them down toward the barn. As we drive, you can really see how high the grass is in the driveway. Now we can just take the mower down here and mow it, but we've got these cows that need to eat, and it just makes more sense. So what we have is, these nets that we used last year, they're electric nets. They're pretty much trained to the nets, so we don't even have them turned on right now. And they're not electrified, but the cows know not to pass them. So here they are, eating this high grass here. And then they'll soon eventually make it down the other end of the driveway, where we just were, and then into that other pasture then the best news is, is we don't have to mow this. All right, so on our way back, we gotta get our way back up there to finish preparing for these pizzas. Lindsay's getting ready and then we'll have a crowd real soon. You wanna say hi, boys? Hi. What do you like most about farming, Jack? Rotational farming, probably. Yeah. I like soaping pizzas. Oh, you do? You like eating pizzas? Yeah. And okay. serving pizzas. And serving pizzas. Oh, you're really good at that. So we'll be doing that soon. Okay, so here we are on the truck, and uh, guests are starting to arrive, and they're pulling in now. And the farm tour, Jack's finishing up out there. The, meteor. the farm tour is going to start pretty soon, but I'm really impressed with the fact that Stella can stretch a pizza and build a pizza and she can actually cook the pizza. So I want you guys to see that real quick. Let's what see what you got, Stella. Okay. Stella, what do you like most about making pizza? I don't know. I thought you were gonna say eating the pizza. Yeah, that's true. You go, girl. In the cheese, did you get the onions yet? Uh, yeah. Okay, let's see the onions here. All right, here come the pepperonis. Okay, and then we're gonna demonstrate for you how this pizza's cooked in the oven. So those of you who have not seen this before, the oven right here gets about, I don't know, 850-ish degrees. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Neapolitan-style pizza, so we keep it a little calmer. Neapolitan-style pizza is probably, I don't know, closer to 1,000 degrees. And um, it gets real pale, but at the same time, all these black speckles get all over it. And then it's not... Here, we're gonna scoop that up real quick, Stella, and put it in here. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And so we keep the oven just a little calmer. Uh oh. You got it? Yeah. Alright, good. And then we're gonna slide that in there. And so we keep the oven just a little bit calmer. So it develops a crust. So the way this works is, you got the oven here, 
and it's got the flames which go over the top. You can kind of see that happening. That helps uh, melt the cheese on the top. But then the real heat comes from the stone down here in the bottom. It forms a crust on the bottom of the pizza. It's important that we don't move the pizza until we form a crust on the bottom. And that happens relatively quickly. That thing's only been in there seconds. You can kind of see the back of the pizza is already starting to rise. And then what will happen is here in a second, we'll kind of scoop it up and spin it around. Here, hold this down. So then this way, the back of the oven is a lot hotter than the front. And so then it could cook a little more evenly. So you can see down there in the bottom, already it's starting to develop a little bit of a crust. You see that? And it's been in there for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds maybe. Let's see if we can zoom in on that just a little bit. And then we're gonna turn it around. It's been in there like certainly less than a minute, maybe a minute. It's already got a crust on the bottom, you see that? And the pizza's almost done on the top. It's such a short yeah. amount of time. Okay, we're almost done. Come close. I'm gonna scoop that up and get a little closer to the fire just to kind of get the edges finished up there. So what we have is a good a good looking undercarriage. See those freckles on the pizza there? That's what we're looking for, the scorching of the cheese. And that's the pizza. Here, take that. Got it? Okay, go. Don't run. Chickens help to offset the have to have a certain amount of hooves on the ground in order to impact it enough. But then that also makes you have to move them. Yes. And um, and so the so the smaller the paddock, the more hooves, the more impact, the faster you heal. But then that's also more more often. Thank you. 
we have many we, today. I think we, I think we do have seven. Oh gosh. Okay, now drop it, guys. Oh yeah, I didn't smell the chicks. Let's go. It's on me, guys. Fifteen. Is that we don't have enough exposure to death in the natural sense. 